We have a lot to talk about because this MacBook Air has been kind of treated unfairly and not really given the credit it deserves. Because when Apple released their first M1 Macs, they did so inside of the data designs of older Intel machines. Now, while these devices may have looked exactly the same, they were far from the same computer, with Apple changing the architecture completely from x86 Intel-based chips to their own ARM-based custom processors. And the results were revolutionary. Apple took entry-level computers that were notorious for lower performance, overheating, and average battery life, and overnight, turned turned them into some of the fastest computers you could buy, and at price points that, especially for Apple, seemed kind of too good to be true. They were really good values. However, this beautiful chip hardware was chained to that older design, so while the inside screamed the future, the outside screamed the past. Well, that all changed about a week ago, when Apple finally released their long-awaited redesign to the M2 MacBook Air. And now I can finally say, that the final piece to the puzzle of the Apple Silicon transition is complete because this new laptop design is one of their best yet and it makes me feel like I am truly using something from the future. What was that? So unlike last time where the most exciting update were the internals to the MacBook Air, this time the start is clearly to the exterior design. Ever since the release of the 2018 iPad Pro, we have seen Apple slowly and methodically applying the same design language to almost all of their product lineups, replacing sloped or curved designs with this new flatter design that is a direct callback to older designs like the iPhone 4 and 5 and even older MacBook designs. However, the technology has advanced so much much that Apple has now made these flat-sided designs crazy thin. The thin designs of Apple's past were always pretty thin, but they used a lot of optical illusions by making either one side thinner or rounding out the center of the computer to make it seem thinner than it actually was. Kind of like the design of the last MacBook Air. Apple's new take on the MacBook Air design drops one of its most iconic traits, the sloped teardrop shape design that has been with us ever since Steve pulled out the original MacBook Air out of that manila envelope all those years ago. But the result is equally as startling, with this MacBook Air sharing the same exact uniform thinness all around, so it's just 11.3 millimeters thick. This makes it, I believe, Apple's thinnest overall Mac ever. And while you may be skeptical about the advantages of making devices thinner and thinner, it does change a lot about the laptop's role, making the air so thin that I have not found a bag or sleeve that could not accommodate its sleek design. It also makes the weight distribution on the air, which only weighs 2.7 pounds, feel very well balanced to the point where picking it up and carrying it around with you from chair to couch to coffee table to cafe to, to anywhere, very effortless. Paired together with an excellent full-size keyboard and Touch ID login, this is the best designed laptop that Apple currently makes. Overall, the Air's build quality is practically flawless. It feels solid without being heavy, the trackpad is buttery smooth, and the hinge design is so next level. It is just so smooth that you'll be strangely left satisfied every time you open and close it. Oh, love that. Now, what's kind of a hassle might be with this color, because Apple has expanded the color lineup in the air this year to include the usual silver and space gray, but also new starlight and midnight colors. I chose the midnight color, which is supposed to be kind of like a dark navy color, but in some lighting, uh, it just kind of looks similar to something like the black plastic MacBook of old. It's a nice color and very stealth looking. However, like most of the reviews have pointed out by now, it is a fingerprint magnet that no amount of wiping and upkeep will be able to keep this thing pristine after more than an hour of use. So if you are bothered by fingerprints and smudges, stay clear of this color. I am embracing the status of myself as being a sloppy, dirty primate and uh, you know getting my fingers all over this. So I am embracing the smudge, as I say. I'm, I'm embracing the smudge on the MacBook Air, but it is something you have to accept. Now, there is more to this design besides the color and the thin profile. 
The most radical design difference is the front display, which receives a MacBook Pro style makeover with thinner bezels with a front facing notch, which expands the display from the previous 13.3 inches to 13.6 inches. Now the display is very nice. I think it looks a tad bit better than the older M1 Air's display, especially with that extra 100 nits of screen brightness. Colors look very good on it. They are very accurate to the eye. The screen is vibrant. And with that extra 100 nits of screen brightness, it is very nice to use outside. But don't get me wrong, it is not a mind-blowing display, the same way that the more expensive MacBook Pros were with their mini LED display, but for most tasks that you use a computer for, sometimes it is hard to tell the difference. And there's other hardware goodies and upgrades that come into this new Air. One of them is a new speaker system, which just kind of sounds like a hair bit better to me than the older M1 MacBook Air. It has a little bit more separation for spatial audio, but to me, it still lacks that deep, satisfying bass, and the volume doesn't get as high as I would like it to be. Maybe because there's actually no speaker grills on this laptop with the sound coming up from the keyboard, but Overall, it's a good speaker system for a laptop and, and probably better than most. It also comes with an upgrade at 1080p webcam versus the older M1 MacBook Air 720p webcam, and it does look better than that webcam. Although for me, I still feel like you need a lot of lighting to make these webcams look decent. And I kind of stand by that all computer webcams aren't all that great. Like it's fine for video calls. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna call you out on it. And the microphone system, is good for, for doing clear crystal uh, voice recording and stuff like that for video calls. But uh, in terms of just like the webcam overall, it's not the best. And when you compare it up against phones, it really starts to lack, which is probably why uh, in Mac OS Ventura, which is going to be released later this fall, Apple will actually let you use your iPhone's camera as a webcam. So it's an improvement in the webcam, but still, uh, for laptop technology, it's just kind of mediocre. And the Air even comes with a new port. So Apple is bringing back the MagSafe charger, which it got rid of on the 2018 Retina MacBook Air. Now, the MagSafe port is a nice addition to ensure that not only does your laptop stay safe on your table when you're charging it and you trip over the wire, but it also frees up the otherwise limited port selection. So with a dedicated charging port, you always have full access to the remaining two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, which has already been handy for me on the go when I need to plug in an external drive and also an SD card adapter, which I kind of wish that this MacBook Air had natively. I wish it had an SD card slot, but I think with the release of the M2 Air, it is clear that Apple is making a definitive line in the sand. And that is that pro computers get thicker designs with more ports, while consumer level computers continue to go thinner and thinner while sticking with limited port options like USB-C. Now, these two Thunderbolt ports are very fast. They do allow for a bunch of different connections or adapters. They're very versatile ports, but Another thing that still bothers me about the M2 Air is that you can only hook it up to one external display at a time. I thought that was just a limitation with bandwidth on the M1 chip, but with the M2 chip now having even more memory options up to 24 gigabytes and being more powerful than the M1 chip, uh, especially with the new GPUs, it just feels like these should be able to drive at least two displays. So it just feels like Apple's kind of artificially limiting this for some reason, and I really hope they don't keep that philosophy going forward. I really hope a future update to the entry-level computers allows for more display connections. It would just be a nice thing to have. All right, now we've spent so much time on the outside of this laptop because really, I think that's where most people are going to appreciate this new laptop over the older M1 Air because the internals aren't as exciting but they are still impressive. The M2 chip in my testing has been speedy and has performance increases expected with a year over year chip upgrade. It has better single core performance, better multi-core performance and better GPU performance. But let's address the elephant in the room because if you're a Greg head, You've probably seen some of my more in-depth benchmarking testing with this MacBook Air, and you've probably seen that, yes, it does thermal throttle. And thermal throttling in a thin, non-pro laptop is unacceptable, because we are the honest channel here, and we do not lie to consumers just to kiss Apple's butt. 
Hey, what's going on with the video transmission? What is... Hello everyone, future Greg here, and that's right, I'm back. Because I'm here to put an end to the silly little controversies surrounding the benchmarks and the thermal throttling issues on this beautiful computer, the M2 MacBook Air. This is a computer from the future. I would know. I was personally sent back in time by Apple computers to deliver this technology to Tim Cook himself. I myself am running on the M800 series of processors and this is only on the M2. This is just a taste of what the future has to offer. And let me tell you, this is one powerful machine. You have to understand that this is a very thin and light aluminum computer. Much like myself, I am made of aluminum. And you have to understand that there is no fan inside of this machine. It is all done through passive cooling. And when the M1 was out, everyone was raving, saying it was a laptop that felt like it was from the future. But it had the old design. The design was stuck in the past, even though the chip was in the future. Well, now we finally combined both. It's fast. It's sleek. It looks great in this nice midnight color, just like me, future Greg. So yes, maybe it does get a little hotter if you're doing your synthetic benchmarks. If you're running it like Max Tech, sure, maybe it's not going to perform as good as a MacBook Pro. But that is why there is a separate MacBook Pro. This machine is not meant for pro users. It is meant for consumer level users. So. Stop your whining. If you want a pro machine, go buy a pro machine. They make excellent MacBook Pros. If you want a lightweight machine that you can take with you anywhere, but still has amazing power, you have to buy the M2 MacBook Air. The nonsense is over. And if I hear you complain about it one more time, I will send you back to the past. I will put Intel back and you will never ever see Apple Silicon again. Future Greg has a point. I think the most important part remains. The M2 chip is still wildly efficient compared to every other laptop chip on the market, and it does this all without sacrificing on battery life because the M2 Air still lasts just about the same time as the M1 Air, which already had stellar battery life. Now, for most workloads and for the user that this computer is intended for, this laptop will give users practically no issues. If you're a pro and want to push this thing without even the most minuscule or minute performance drops, well, Apple makes other laptops for you, but most people don't need that kind of sustained performance. I repeat, most people do not edit 4K or 8K video or 3D render projects all day long. Most people want a reliable laptop that will last for years where they can browse the web, answer email, watch video, make presentations, carry it with them all day long, have all day battery life, and the MacBook Air checks all of those boxes and then some. It would have been foolhardy to recommend an older style laptop like the old Intel MacBook Airs to someone who wanted to edit 4K video, but I can actually recommend the M2 MacBook Air to someone who does want to edit 4K video as long as they understand that there will be a little bit of a performance hit because of the thermal throttling. But as long as you understand that there's just a little performance hit, this thing still performs admirably well for those tasks. I've been editing video on this since I've got this machine for review and I am really surprised with just how well it handles it. But let me end this with saying that this M2 MacBook Air would have been the almost perfect laptop. Perhaps the best laptop that Apple has ever released without question if it didn't come with two issues. The first would be the lower SSD speed on the base model. Granted, like I said in my time with the base model, I mostly didn't notice the lower SSD speeds. There are some times though when swapping large amounts of memory or doing file transfers that I did notice the downgrade from the previous M1 256 gigabyte configuration, which does ship with a faster drive. Perhaps that would have even been more forgivable if it wasn't for the price hike this year. This laptop starts at $1,199, which is certainly not cheap. And I feel like for that price, there should have been no regression from the previous M1 MacBook Air. We expect technology to progress, and Apple, like any company that made the decision to release a more expensive computer with a downgrade, should be called out on it. It would be like if the M2 was slightly slower than the M1. Would it really impact most users? Probably not. But it's still a regression. It's still a downgrade where we should expect more. 
Now, the speed decrease isn't enough to stop me from recommending the base model. It is still a good laptop, and overall, faster than the M1 it replaces. That's the important part. However, I would urge most users to upgrade to the 512 gigabyte configuration, not just for the faster drive, but also for more storage. 256 gigabytes on a laptop is very low, and it can fill up quite fast. So if you want this futuristic laptop to stand the test of time, which it should, an extra $200 for peace of mind and to store all your apps, your photos, your videos, whatever, is worth the investment. Don't cheap out on the storage now. If you plan to keep this for a long time, just paying a little bit extra now will ensure a better computer for years to come. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask me about how much memory should I choose? Well, memory is a very personal choice, but I'm going to try and generalize it here. So I think most users will be fine with eight gigabytes if you're doing basic tasks. But if you plan to push this with some pro apps like Final Cut, Premiere, Photoshop, or something like that, then I would recommend to at least bumping this up to 16 gigabytes of memory. I think you will overall have a much smoother experience. Overall though, despite my criticism towards price and storage, I really do like this M2 MacBook Air. There is largely nothing wrong with this laptop, and it is still amazing just how much performance Apple is squeezing out of this thin, fanless design that doesn't even heat up during most tasks. It's also insane how much value the M series of chips continue to deliver for a normal user, because when I use this MacBook Air next to something way more expensive, like my MacBook Pro or even my desktop Mac Studio, most common tasks, the things you do every day, feel just as fast to do on this MacBook Air as they do on those way more expensive computers. The just regular performance, the day-to-day -day stuff on this is just so fast and just so smooth. It really is great. Sure, the $200 price increase over last generation will sting the wallet a bit, especially when you need to start adding on some of those other upgrades. But I think you'll quickly forget about that extra $200 as you use what will probably end up being the best design MacBook for years to come. All right, everyone, that is my uh, kind of week in review with the M2 MacBook Air. Please let me know what you think of the M2 MacBook Air in the comments below, and let's give future Greg some love in the comments below because, because you never know when he'll be back. Okay, I, I thought he was gonna show up, but apparently not. All right, so if you wanna buy uh, this M2 MacBook Air, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Something is very wrong. What is this? NFTs, what is that? Crypto, crypto monkeys, board apes. This is very, very wrong. I must have altered the past too much. I must go back and change it again.